Hi everyone, I want to set up a couple more relevant example problems uh, to give some people an idea of how some of these really important problems go for, uh, come together in our uh, forces uh, section. Uh, so in this scenario, we have a block of mass one on a frictionless surface, and it's suspended through the massless uh, frictionless pulleys uh, through a rope system to M2, which is suspended uh, from a pulley. And we want to find out the accelerations of everything in the system. When we do that, we start out with some free body diagrams. Uh, we have a normal force and a weight on M1. Uh, pulling down and a tension force pulling to the right. M2, little trickier, we have a free body um, and it has a weight pulling down. And then we have these two tensions here uh, in the rope. Uh, the tension on the left side of the rope is pushing up. The tension on the right side of the rope is pulling up. And they both act on either side of this pulley, which is massless and connected to M2. Uh, so we generally draw this in our tension diagram in our diagrams as just two tension forces pulling up, two tensions like that. And then we can jot down a coordinate system. We'll call this x and y, and we'll use the same directions up here, x and y, uh, like that. And then we can write down F equals MA. So some of the forces in the X direction for uh, mass one is just going to be the tension force. And that's M1, A1 in the X direction. Some of the forces in the Y direction on number one is just N minus M1G equals zero. Turns out not to be very useful. Uh, for the next equation, we have some of the forces for block two in the x direction is zero because there are no forces. And for two in the y direction, that is going to be 2t minus m2g is m2a2y. Now, to link these two equations, the conceptual leap in this particular problem is to connect a1x to a2y. And we need to write down a relationship for it. And this is the part where we sort of have to recognize that if I move a uh, uh, mass one over by distance x1 to the right, that distance is going to be picked up by the rope here and here. And so m2 is only going to drop down by half of the distance. So writing this down is if I move x1, delta x1, to right means mass two falls by delta y two is equal to delta x one over two. This is just the magnitudes. So that's because the full distance here on this rope gets picked up uh, in one half of it goes into one side of the rope and half of it will be absorbed in the other because this pulley is going to sit at the bottom and take the slack out of the rope. And that means that we can relate the two accelerations mathematically. And in terms of the coordinates, we write down that a one x over two is going to be negative a two y. The factor of two is this rope uh, slack argument I gave. And then the negative direction comes from if x and mass 1 moves to the right, mass 2 moves downward, and I've chosen y to be upward. If I flip my coordinate system, I'd write down the correct sign for that. Uh, but these allow us to relate everything together. And so I will go ahead and I will define a2y, or let's call a1x. Let's set a1x sorry, a1 subscript x, we'll just call that the acceleration. And that's what we'll solve for. So we can write this down, uh, our f equals ma. So from the first equation up here, we get that the tension is equal to m1a. And from the second equation down here, we get that 2t minus m2g is equal to m2a2y, uh, but that's equal to m2 times minus a1x over 2 
which is just what we're calling a over two. And so this is the link. And now we have uh, an, an expression with t and a, and we want to eliminate the t's and solve for a. So to do that, I will take this tension and I will plug it in over here and get uh, 2m1a minus m2g is equal to m2 times negative a over 2. I'll multiply through by a factor of 2, and that will give me 4m1a minus 2m2g is equal to minus m 2 a, and then I'll collect my a's on the left-hand side of the equation. So that gives me 4m1a plus m2a, and I'll push the g to the other side, m2g, and then I will factor out an a, plus m2 is equal to 2m2g, and divide through to get my acceleration, 2m2g over 4 m1 plus m2. And this is, again, let me stress, the acceleration of 1 in the x direction. To solve for the other acceleration, I just use this equation up here. And I'll get that I just have to divide that by 2 and reverse the sign. So I get that a, oops, I get a2y is minus a 1x over 2, and then I divide this by 2 is negative m2g over 4m1 plus m2. Okay, and that's the mechanics that we need to uh, put our uh, accelerations together. Now the second problem I want to work out here is 5.112. And in this case, we have a wedge of mass m1 sitting on top of a frictionless surface with another block m2 sitting frictionless on top of that. And we want to solve for the accelerations of the two blocks in the system. And this is a tricky problem because normally we have the wedge down here, this second wedge that's anchored in place, and we can just solve for m2 as it falls down uh, the ramp. But m1 is free to move. And this means that uh, as m2 force falls down, it's actually going to push m1 to the side. And so m2 isn't going to fall down at this angle here that we will call theta. It's going to fall down at some other angle because m1 is getting out of the way. So we actually have a fairly challenging situation in front of us. But with the tools of calculus and Newton's laws, we're going to be okay to kind of decrypt what's happening in this situation. So in this problem, I have to be very careful about selecting inertial reference frames. And if I start solving F equals MA for block M2, but M1 is accelerating, uh, M2 is not linked to M1 in an inertial reference frame. What we were going to do is we're going to go straight out to the Earth and define a single xy coordinate system uh, for this problem. Uh, I'm going to start out as I do with all um, in my dynamics problems. I'll draw some free body diagrams. So for mass one, we have some forces on it. We have the force upward uh, from the Earth. We have the weight downward m. 1g. And then we have the contact force that, um, I, yeah, we have the contact force uh, that is m2 pushing on it. So I'm going to call that, that is the force of block 2 on mass 1 or on block 1. So I'll call it F21 pushing down like that. It is a normal force, but uh, because it is between two objects in the system, I'm just going to label it as such, uh, as just the interaction between those two. Uh, similarly, mass 2 is going to feel the equal and opposite force of it, F12 and M2G pushing downward. And so, uh, in terms of the coordinate systems uh, here, we're going to have that this is an angle theta, and this is an angle theta. 
uh, given the coordinates uh, right here. And then we can break things out into this coordinate system. We also, in this problem, have to define coordinates. So I am going to very carefully establish some x equals 0, y equals 0 coordinate point down here at the bottom of the ramp. And so then the position for block 1 is just going to be some distance from there measured over, and we'll call that x1. So it's going to be x1 i hat. R2 is going to have some coordinate that is measured over to where the block is, and call that x2, and then up to its block uh, here. And we will call that, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's draw it to the corner just to keep it consistent. So like this measured to the corner. And so then we have y2 and then x2. And then r2 is going to be x2 i hat plus y2 j hat. So the, what we will then use is the ideas of these two coordinate systems to calculate accelerations. Because if these are the positions, then the accelerations are the second time derivatives of these vectors. So a sub 1 as a vector is going to be a sub 1 in the i hat direction only, and then a sub 2 as a vector is going to be a sub 2x i hat, I'll call this x just to be clear, plus a sub 2y in the j hat direction. And that's just the time derivative of those two uh, relationships. The other thing that I get is a bit of a geometric relationship. And I want you to note that this distance here is the length of the bottom wedge. We'll call this length of the bottom wedge. Let's draw that with the steadying graph. So something like that. That length there, we'll call it L. And so there is a triangle here uh, that is that has a length, this distance from here to here, let me highlight it, this from here to here. If L is the whole length, the bottom of the triangle there is L minus x2 minus x1. So x2 minus x1 is this distance here. I'll draw it in a different color. That distance there is x2 minus x1, where I've defined x2 and x1 here. And so this remaining distance there along the bottom is x2 minus x1. And that's important because that is the base of a triangle with a height of y2. And so that x distance there uh, and so if I say that the, uh, that is the x distance there, let me get a little room here, here pull this down, and note that if uh, that is the tangent of theta is equal to the y interval over the x interval for this triangle here, then this angle is y2 over uh, L times x, L minus x2 minus x1. And so I can actually multiply that up to say that y2 is equal to tan theta times L minus x2 minus x1. And then I'm going to take the time derivative of that whole expression uh, to get a relationship that a 2y, that's the position in the y direction. The tangent theta doesn't change, it's a constant. Uh, tangent theta times the second time derivative of this expression, the L drops out, and we are left with x, or sorry, negative a sub x2 minus minus, distribute that in, plus a sub x1. And this allows us to make a relationship between 
the accelerations in the y direction, x direction, and a uh, the x one. So this is taking into account the fact that as this is sliding down here, uh, what we've done is we can just relate the accelerations of the the wedge uh, to the motion of the block, and it's taking into account the fact that the wedge is moving, the block is moving, but they're remaining in contact each other. So this is something that we call an equation of constraint. And I want you to notice what I got away with here is I wrote down a geometric relationship and then I expressed one side of it as the other and then I took two time derivatives, take two d by dt's and that gets us uh, to this second expression uh, here. Uh, I think, you know, so that allows us to get here. Critically, what happened is that this L is a constant, and so when I took the time derivative of it, it canceled out, so was the tan theta. Uh, or it didn't cancel out, it just went to zero. Okay, so that gives us um, the setup for uh, this expression. And now we can, we've done almost all of the physics. We're going to go ahead and make some relationships between uh, the things that we know. Uh, so first off, let's go into our coordinate system, x, y, and write down the f equals ma for our different objects. So for f, oh, sorry, for mass 1, The sum of the forces in the x direction for 1 is just going to be the x component of the uh, F21, the contact force. So it's just going to be um, F21 sine theta. So F21 sine theta in the negative direction, because we've pointed x in the positive direction going this way. So this component is pointed in the negative direction. So minus F21 sine theta is equal to M1A1 in the x direction. Uh, some of the forces in the y direction turns out not to be really exciting, but it's going to be the normal force minus F21 cos theta minus M2G, or sorry, M1G, M1G is equal to zero because it's going to be constrained to move along the surface. Uh, for mass two, uh, we have in the vertical direction that uh, F12 cos theta minus M2G is equal to M2A2Y. And the, so that's the sum of the forces for two in the Y direction. And the sum of the forces for two in the X direction is going to be equal to F12 sine theta, which is the, that's not relevant to you, uh, the forces in the y direction. So this is the F12 uh, sine theta is the only po uh, component pointing in the x direction. And so then what we get is F12 sine theta is M2A2 x. All right, so we now have uh, three nice equations. Uh, we have expression here, we have an expression here, and we have an expression here. So the first thing is, is I'm going to use the two x components to make an observation. Namely, we have f12 and f21 with directions. We have drawn their directions using Newton's uh, third law, F21 and F12, are equal and opposite, and therefore their magnitudes, F21 and F12, are the same. So I can say that uh, F21 sine theta is equal to F12, negative F12 sine theta is equal to M1A1x, and I also know that positive, and that's just rearranging this first equation, and then F12 sine theta is equal to M2A2x. And uh, therefore, we have that uh, if I equate these two, I get negative M2A2x uh, is equal to M1A1x, or a perhaps familiar expression, M1A1x, 
plus m2a2x equals zero. And this essentially says that if block two goes to the right, then block one goes to the left, and the relative accelerations depend on their masses. This looks a lot like a center of mass formula. So with good reason, this is a conservation of momentum scenario, but we uh, that's a consequence, but not a result of this. Okay, uh, so that gives us the pieces that we need to link these two um, together uh, here. And then the last thing that we're going to do is use this relationship up here to solve for one of those variables. And I'm going to focus my attention here on M1A1X. You can solve for any of the things, but I'm gonna solve for what happens to the ramp in this scenario. And that means I want to get rid of the A2Y expression. And to do that, I will use this uh, geometric relationship. So I'm going to just write down that F12, cos theta minus m2g is equal to m2. And then I also know that a2y is equal to tan theta times a1x minus a2x, which is just this expression stuck in down there. Uh, so these are the two pieces that I need. I will take those off to the next page where we will do some exciting algebra. So let's take that. Let us hop into our next page. We'll pop down our math again, paste, and bring this on back here. Uh, so um, if I'm going to solve, I'm going to say that A1x is what I'm looking for, is what... I seek here. I have two expressions in terms of uh, various forces. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to take my knowledge that says uh, from the previous page, I know that uh, F21, uh, I'll use, yeah, this one here. So I know from this that I can get F Oops. F21 is equal to negative, and that's, uh, let's see here, M1A1X over sine theta. Okay, so it's M1A1X over sine theta. And so I can substitute this expression up here. And that gives me that uh, because F21 has the same magnitude as F12, uh, so I get that uh, that is minus m1a1x over sine theta times cos theta minus m2g is equal to m2 tan theta. And then I get the difference in accelerations a1x minus a2x. Uh, but those I know I can replace a2x as minus m 1 a1x over m2 is equal to a2x. And so I'll stick this in here and this becomes a1x plus, so it's a negative sign and a minus sign, plus m1a1x over m2. Ooh, we're getting close because the only thing in this expression is a1x and it's just all over but the algebra. So let's uh, let's do that algebra. I'm going to multiply this m2 in. Uh, so I'm going to leave the tan theta out, uh, tan theta, and I'll subtract. Um, yeah, I'll put, leave the tan theta out. No, let's throw the tan theta in as well. Tan theta times m2 a1x plus the m2 comes in, and I get m1 a1x tan theta. Ooh, very exciting. And then we get over here. Uh, minus, um, we'll just rewrite it, m1a1x over sine theta uh, times cos theta, hmm, also tan theta e minus m2g is equal to tan theta. And so from here, I'll collect this a1x over to the other side. I'll call this mess down here. That's a cotangent, or uh, I'm a simple man to one over a tangent, so we'll just call this uh, 
minus m2g uh, is equal to uh, tan theta m2a1x plus m1 tan theta a1x plus m1 a1x over tan theta. Now let's pull out the a1x because that's what we're looking for. So this is minus m2g times a1x times all together here. Uh, let's see here. m2 tan theta plus m1 tan theta plus m1 over tan theta. And then uh, divide through by this whole mass. So we get a1x is equal to negative m2g all over m2 tan theta plus m1 tan theta uh, plus m1 over tan theta. All right. Now, formally, we're done. No need to do anything else. But what we can do is tidy this up just a little bit. And I'm going to do that by multiplying through by sine theta, cos theta on the top and on the bottom, sine theta, cos theta. And this is just sort of squinting at the trig identities. I realized this is something I can figure out. And the reason is, is that m1 a1x is equal to minus m2g sine theta, cos theta which is some sort of funky double angle thing, I believe. Uh, but uh, when we multiply uh, tangent theta pi sine theta cos theta, the cos cancels the cos in the denominator, leaving me with a sine squared theta. So this is m1 plus m2 sine squared theta. And if I multiply uh, this sine theta cos theta through uh, here, this cancels out the sine in the bottom, so that becomes plus m1 cos squared theta. And that gets me into the only trig identity I've ever learned, which is sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. Uh, so that is uh, m1 uh, sine squared theta plus m1 cos squared theta is equal to m1 plus m2 sine squared theta. And that's a cute little expression for what the ramp does. And I could then take this expression and go back into the previous to find out what the block does. Turns out it's a lot hairier uh, in terms of trig, but this is the basic idea. It's negative. This kind of makes sense. Okay, uh, everything is good. And it has the neat behavior that if M1 gets ultra huge and dominates M2, this whole expression will take a limit to zero, which makes sense. If the big block, big ramp is massive, it won't actually uh, move around much. So this gives us the setup that we need and we could kind of carry it through from here, but I wanted to illustrate this because you needed to write down the constraint accelerations and use the uh, Newton third law forces. And then just a little bit of hairy algebra, kind of give you some guidance on some of the things that show up as we go through. Uh, anyways, hope that helps.